Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel for a very special project. Now you may have seen some sneak peeks of these two albums already on my channel and on Facebook in Paper Crafting with Paul and in the Cool Cats groups because this album was made with the help of Kay and Maggie who are Cool Cats Crafts and they've helped come up with a kit for helping to make this and making it so much easier and taking you step by step through it. So it's called Guinevere because the first two albums I designed or the first two kits I designed for Cool Cats were called Arthur and Merlin so we've kept the theme going and this is what you will get in your kit. Now these aren't finished yet because I'm still working on the project and working on the videos. So I'll go back and probably edit some of this, but a little sneak peek. You will get an instructional booklet and I've gone through and I've taken photos at every step. So you'll get your instructions booklet. It will also be stapled together. And there's a lot more than just those four. You will also get your front cover with the aperture already cut to size your back and your spine already made from a nice thick grey board. You will get some of this fantastic tape, the Black Tiger tape. This is brilliant for the construction. So I'll show you how brilliant this is for not only putting your album together, your cover together, but also for tidying up the aperture. You will also get a piece of plastic. So it's a piece of clear acrylic. Yes, blue now, because I've still got the protective tape on it, which will fit on your cover to give you a nice cover there. And you'll also get another piece, which you can use for one of the pages inside, which I'll be showing you in a later video. So we'll start off our first construction video by putting to all, uh, together the cover. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the cover, the spine and the pages, and then you can decorate it as you wish. But I will have videos for each of the individual pages and how to decorate the acetate and things as well in other videos as well. So make sure you have a look through the whole playlist for everything. So we're going to start off by making that hard cover for our album. I've got my three pieces here and my frame, uh, my tiger tape, which is a construction type tape, which is quite papery. So it's nice and thin. You can take it around corners and things, but it's also strong enough to hold your album together. And I've also got some nice sharp scissors, one with a nice pointy end is good so you can get into the corners. So I'm using my Tim Holtz titanium scissors. To start off, I can put my back and my spine to the side. I'm going to unroll some of my tape and have it sticky side up on my workspace. Let's just move my cover out the way. And I want to cover too long and one short edge. So I'm going to start off on the long edge. I'm just going to place it down the centre of my tape. So it's at the edge here. I've lined up the left hand side with the end of the tape. And I'm just going to give it a little squeeze down to make sure it's stuck. Then I'm just going to unroll some more sticky and keeping it nice and tight. I'm lifting this over and pressing it down. Now, if it tears, you don't need to worry. 
that's all you got to do is either take it off or start again which it'll do fine because we haven't pressed it down too hard yet or just tear it off and then just start on that edge again so far i've been quite lucky so let's just do the third one as well now i won't need to do that fourth edge because the spine will be going there so we just cut off Now, you need to hold it in the air here because you've got it sticking out on both sides. You're going to take your scissors and cut a little V towards that corner. You can see how small the V was. And you're gonna repeat that on both the corners this side. So just a uh, gentle V. Make sure you remove your tape from your scissors before cutting the next, otherwise it will stick to itself. And I know that because I've done that mistake. So all four corners done. And at this point, I want to make sure my tape is adhered to the edge of my grey board. So I'm just going to run my finger on all three sides. And you will start to see the shape of your grey board showing through your tape. Then I'm just going to take my point finger, my thumb, and I'm just going to make it a little shallow and just press it onto the grey board like that, just gently rubbing it on. And that's just taking the tape over the edges. I wonder if you can see. Can I show you? Yes, it's starting to go like a roof of a house really like that and that's just giving you a nice adhesion around the top and then i'm going to take my thumb and finger now this gray board is so strong so thick that i can just stand it upright so i'm just taking my thumb and finger from the center and just pressing it flat onto the gray board and working from the center out Usually I just do it with both fingers like that. So let's do it on this one like I normally do. So I pinch it over. So you see it starts to go over. And then press it down. And you will get a nice smooth finish. If you don't, it's no panic. I'll show you what you can do. And then you do all three. Down. Now, I've tried to get a little bit of a wrinkle there. Just take your Teflon tool and just rub it down. So it's like ironing it out, those creases. There we go. Now, if you do have bits overhanging, just trim them off. That's fine, that side. So that's your front cover done, just iron it all out. Now you're going to do exactly the same for your back cover, covering two long and one short. So place it down the centre. Take some tape, press it over. Take some more tape. You can see it can really take has some working because I was really pulling the tape then off to the side to get it exposed. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure it's on. Cut off my side so you'll see now when I'm doing it at my normal pace how quick once you've got the hang of it it is to make a cover. last one and just as I did before just take my finger and thumb just tear it and then start from the center out just pressing more and more down on flip again 
I can't do it with two hands like that. I need to stand it up. So if I'm holding it with one hand, I can't do the two ways, so I'll do it this bit. Here we are. And then just gently rub it all down and smooth out any creases. And if you've got any overhang, trim it off. And then with your spine, we're just going to take a piece just a bit shorter than our spine. And we're just going to put it half on and half sticking off. And then same on the bottom. Okay. And normally I would now start taping it all together. But I've got an aperture and I find it easier to do the next bit whilst it's not attached. It's just working on the flat bit. I'm going to take the tape and I'm going to cut it the width of my aperture. And I'm going to place it so that half of it is in contact and half of it is in the aperture. Now this is a bit wide. You can see I've gone a little bit too far there. So I'm going to just cut off an angle towards that corner and tear it off. So that would be one way. But if you find it's just too fiddly to do that and get the width right, just cut it a bit extra. And stick it down onto the grey board on the top. So you've still got half in the aperture. Then turn it over, take your scissors and cut towards that V and then fold it over. And you can either cut those off or just tape them over. If they're really small, I'd chop it off. But what you're trying to do is make sure everything is covered in black. If you've got a little bit showing, just use a black pen and colour it in. So now we're going to do this bit. So we're just going to cut it, fold that triangle over. Now that's a bit small, so what I'm going to do is cut it off because otherwise it's just going to tear off. So I'm going to just trim off that angle. I've just got one more to go. triangle. It's quite small there so what I'm going to do is just continue that mitre that way. Now most of this would be covered anyway. Oh, I haven't done the other side yet have I? No wonder it wouldn't fold in. Again it's a bit small. So cut it off and fold it over. So that looks okay on the front. On the back, we've got these exposed bits, which we don't want. So I'm just going to take the tape. Cut some pieces and just cover up those corners. There we have 
your cover on your aperture all lined up. Now I can see in that corner, I've got a little tiny bit of grey board showing there. I'm not going to put any tape or anything in there for something so small. I'll just take a black pen because I don't think it'll even, it's so small it won't even show up on camera, but I know it's there. So that's how you would fill in your aperture. But what you'll see in the album, you're only going to see a little tiny bit. So if it's untidy around here or not even, it doesn't matter. Let's just iron that bit out. Because that's all you can see is this little bit in the centre. So that's my front spine back. Time now to assemble it together. I'm going to take my tape and work it vertically now, just an inch above and below. So there's my piece. And I'm going to bring my cover down the centre of my tape. And make sure it's stuck. Now you could use your quarter inch uh, spine spacers here if you've got them. Alternatively, just place your spine and line up the corners. Flip it up, holding everything together, keeping the top and the bottom in line and flip it over. Because you do want some space between your covers for it to be able to move. Then just gently ease it apart. And bring the tape above and below. And we're going to repeat it for here. Now we might get a little bit fiddlier because we've got that spine. So when we're flipping it over, we're trying to hold lots of things together. And believe you me, it's much easier when you try not to get it on camera as well. If I was just doing this in my normal craft space, where I'm not thinking about, oh, can you see bits? It's much easier. So we're going to line up these corners. So we're lining up the top and bottom of our album as well. So keeping everything in line, holding that spine bit on the bottom here, flipping it up, it's all still in line, flipping it over and opening it up, pulling it back and pressing down. But we don't want those bits exposed. So what I'm gonna do is take more tape and just cover what's left. And with this space. So you're gonna iron it out what you don't want to do is take your um, Teflon tool or bone folder into that gap because you will tear the tape. So what we're going to do is just work it up. You can tease it, just don't push it in. And that's the back. And then once you fold it up, you will have a cover with a flexible spine like that, nice strong grey board and a nice finish all the way around. So that is how we use the tiger tape to make the cover. The next step now will be to make the spine and pages for inside. So I've now got my trimmer ready and some cardstock. You'll need eight sheets of cardstock to make the plain base. So I'm going to start off by cutting my page bases. Now in the instructions there'll be more here, but the pages I'm going to start off first and I'll show you why afterwards. They're going to be eight inches by six and three quarters and you need eight of them. So I took my A4 card stock and I've got two sheets here because I want them to be the same size. So I find if I do like this, they'll end up, say so if you've got a guillotine, this is no issue, you can cut through too easily. 
So I'm gonna trim. And I've managed to trim through the top layer. And now I'm gonna trim the second one. So now I know these are both exactly the same size. So that was my six and three quarters by eight. Now I've already done the other six. They're all exactly the same for the four pages. Now the reason I cut my pages first is I can actually use this scrap piece for my spines. So my spines are six and a quarter tall. Now, a little tip, if you go back just a little hair's breadth from the six and a quarter, your pages will slide on a little bit easier later on. And then the first one is one and seven eighths. So that's just two inches and back an eighth. There we go. So one and seven eighths and two and five eighths. So four eighths is two and a half and an extra eighth. See, so I've managed to get both spines from what is the leftover from the pages. So I've done the cutting. So remember, one each of the spines, eight of the pages. Grab your score board and let's start with the pages. So you're going to put the shorter end, your six and three quarters, into your scoreboard. And then we're going to score at six and a quarter. Because that is the height of our page. So you see now, if your page is six and a quarter, when you cut your papers, you'll cut it at six. You'll get two lots from your 12 by 12. So that's where we become economical with our papers. And do that then for all eight pages. And with your spine, you're going to score at half and three quarters. So half and three quarters. Turn it around 180 degrees and repeat. So half and three quarters. So you'll end up with let's see, a half inch and then three smaller pieces and another half inch there. And we're going to do the same with the other one. Half and three quarters. Turn it around, half and three quarters. So that's our spines done. I could put my scoreboard away and just bring my Teflon tool and my uh, double-sided tape. So this is the uh, sticky paws that the cool cats do which is a really strong double-sided tape. And wherever we've got those half inches, we're gonna apply some tape. So on each of the pages, it's this long bit here. And on our spines, it's the two outers of each one. So all the way across and That's the size. I'm going to put the pages to side. Let's just focus on our spines first. So I'm going to start with my larger one. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to fold the two inner ones upwards. That gives us this U shape. And then we've still got a score line each side here, which is close to the double-sided tape. What we're gonna do with that is fold it back. 
So I'm flipping it over so I can fold it backwards. And this one too. And now you've got a U shape with two flaps. We're gonna do the same with this one. So the two center ones up. So we're making that U shape. And then fold the outer ones back, the ones with the tape on it. Okay, so you don't need to score too hard with those two because they're going to be going in both directions. There we go. So now we have our two spines taped and folded. We can now put them together. So we'll flip them over and we're going to apply our tape down the middle section of the back. And this tape is a little bit thick for the small one. So what I'm gonna do, take some tape. This is where your sharp titanium or your non-stick scissors come in handy. Cut it up the middle and place it down the middle. Now this tape is gonna hold our spine in place for now. The glue is what will keep it there permanently. So now we've got everything taped up. I can take the tape off my thinner one. And as I said, that tape is gonna hold for now, but we're putting quite a bit of weight with our pages and things on top. My glue has tried in the end. Let's hope so. Ah, there we are. And I was coming up too thick, so what I'm going to do is just rub it down. There we go. So with the glue, try not to squeeze it, otherwise that's what happens. I barely touch the sides of my glue, it just sort of runs out on its own, and that's enough. Less is definitely more. And we're going to place this down the centre of our U-shape like that. Got a bit of blob of glue to get rid of. And there we go. Just gonna press it down. So I said that tape is holding there, but it's the glue once it's dry that'll hold it in place. So now we're ready to attach this to our book. So again, I'm just gonna apply some glue. Get it to the edges. And normally, I would now place this down the center. But because we've only got the acetate front, there's no pocket or anything going on it. To give more space in the back, I'm just gonna move it slightly to the left. So closer to our cover. And then aligning the gap, top and bottom, so we've got even spaces, top and bottom, just placing it down and pressing it. I've got a bit of extra glue just because of when I took that out. Now what I should have done before taking that back off is angled the corners. So I'm taking my scissors and I'm just cutting towards that quarter inch score line here. So that first one, you know where you mark the half inch down? So I'm just coming up and trimming it off. Now what this will do is when you've got your pages, it'll help slide them on. And there we 
these two. If I turn it around, it might be easier. And this one. And by gluing that in now, it's going to have time to set and dry whilst I do my pages. So these are the two I've just done. These are the ones, six I have already prepared. And as you can see, I've kept them in their pairs from when I trimmed, so they're identical in size. Now these are gonna be a pocket page, which means that when you've got your page, you'll be able to open it and slide something into the pocket. Now the problem with it is sometimes you get a bold page like this, which we don't want. So to avoid that happening, you really need to score and burnish your page flat or your score line flat. So I'm pressing down, starting from the middle out, just like I did when I was applying the tape to my um, cover. And I'm pressing down hard then, turning it over and pressing down hard again. You want to get that lying as flat as you can. The flatter that is, uh, the flatter your page will lie as well. So I'm applying quite a bit of pressure, getting it flat. So there we go, that's the first page. Now, there's lots of tips and tricks on how to put your pages together. So I thought I'd show you different ways and you can pick your favourite. So one way is just by eye sticking it down. So to do that, you just take a bit of your tape and you fold it out, like so. That means each end is sticky and will stick to your page when you put it down, but all of this won't stick because you've still got the covering on which means you get some room for manoeuvring. So what I'm going to do is making sure these are on opposite sides. Bring my head over so I can line this corner and this corner. Now, if you remember, these two pieces where I've pressed with my finger are where the sticky is exposed. This bit is not stuck yet. So what I can do then is just pull gently out and press and I'll get a nice straight edge there. And then let's open it up. Let's expose some tape again, just a little bit each side. And now as I bring it, I keep this as flat as I can working from the middle out, lining up that corner and lining up that corner. So I'm keeping my page flat, so I'm pressing up and out. And I've got a nice flat page. You're gonna have a little bow, it's just nature. And you want that to put the things in anyway. But as soon as things are on it and there's some weight, It'll be nice and flat. So that's one way of doing it. Another way, if I expose this time towards the inside, <coughs> like that, I can bring this up to meet and fold it over. So you've got your, your edge exposed there. And then the second time you can do it outwards. Just like we did the first one, keep the centre nice and flat and work out. And then just pull that out. So, and you've got a second 
page nicely lined up. A third way, bring your scoreboard back, grab in the two pages. We're going to use our scoreboard to keep things lined up. So I'm going to peel my tape. out, bring in my second page and placing it in that corner. Then I can take, make sure these are the opposite sides again. I can use this to line up my page. So I'm using that L shape there just to line it up and flipping it around. Keeping everything nice and flat. Taking that tape out. So there's another way of doing it. And a, a fourth way. Again, we want it opposite ways. You can take this one, flip it over and just place it in side your page. So you're tucking it under this flap and pressing down. We're doing that side. And open it out. Same as you've done, keep it nice and flat stick it down and pull it out. Now this one does give you an extra hair's breadth each side. So it does actually mean it slides onto your pocket page a little bit easier because it's just a tiny bit taller. But if you don't like that lip, try one of the other ways. And there we have our four pages. Now before you attach them to your album, I would decorate it first. Okay. And I will show you how I attach them once these are decorated. So I'm gonna take a pause and come back. But I wanted to show you where you've taken these mitres, it means your pocket slides on easier than if they were straight edges. It sort of guides your page over and on. So that was the point of cutting those angles. And if you took that little hair's breadth away as well from the spine, it just means your page is a little bit longer than your spine, just a fraction. You know, you wouldn't even notice it usually. That just means it slides on as well without catching too. So that is then your Guinevere base. So the next steps, I will be sharing some more videos with you where I'll sh uh, cover the acetate and show you different pages to go with it. So the next time you'll see this now, it'll be decorated. I'll be putting it together. So here we are at the end of our assembly. And Guinevere is all ready to put together. We have our pages decorated. So we're now going to attach our pages to our spine. Now, I like to start with the back. So this is page seven and that's page eight. Now, when we attach, we need to make sure we're in our pocket channel. That's quite important because some of them have got a second pocket. So make sure you're in the correct one before we start and that you have your pages in the right order. Now, I've only put tape on one side. If you put tape on both sides of your spine, it gets really hard to slide on because it just wants to stick before you're ready. So I attach some glue or just run some glue on the back and also run some glue on top of the tape. This stops it from sticking before we're actually ready. 
Now, the key is to get your photo, uh, sorry, your pocket page inside that pouch, inside the pocket, and to move it until we get to that hinge piece. Now, you don't want to go on it and you don't want to go over it. Otherwise, your page won't flex. So once you've slid it, uh, slid it on, make sure you're nice and straight, top and bottom, and nice and even, and then squeeze it down onto the tape. So now, because you didn't go up to the edge, you can flip it both sides. Then you can do exactly the same with the second page. So let's have make let's get our page first. So it's this one, that's right. So I take off the tape, run some glue down the back so that we seal our pocket. Otherwise, everything is just going to fall out the bottom. Open our pouch to slide it on. And you'll sort of feel when it gets to the hinge, it just sort of stops. There we go. And because we've got this flexy hinge, it does flex a bit. So if you're not perfectly straight, it'll still work. And now, this is the complicated bit. I'm not going to do this bit. I'm going to do page one next, which was that one. And obviously it goes on to spine number one this way. So now the glue needs to go this side. So we're going to open it up, slide it on. There we go. And the final page is this one. Now this one you need to be careful with because it's the slider one, so you've got two. So don't open on that first one, make sure you're in that middle one. on the correct one. Yes, I was. There we go. And it's on. Just bring it to the other side and stick it down. And now I put the slider back in where it was supposed to be, in the top one. So still need to add the corset closures. I'm going to do that in my finishing touches video. So there we have it. Our Guinevere pretty much finished. Just some finishing touches to do. So thank you for watching and for following the series. If you want to see all the elements, make sure you head to the playlists at the top and there'll be a Guinevere playlist for you. So you can follow this project from start to end dip into each page individually, go back, rewatch any bits. Okay, you might want to also look at my closure album, which is another Cool Cats project I did, because that's where you can see a swivel, your corset and your magnet closures taken nice and slowly for you to see how to make them. So if you've enjoyed my Guinevere project, make sure you also look at Arthur and Merlin. There's playlists for them too, and their kits available from Cool Cats as well. And please leave me a comment below. I really like to read them. Also helps the channel grow as well. And please thumbs up and subscribe as well. So thank you for watching. And if you do have a go, please share in my Facebook group, Paper Crafted with Paul. I'd love to see how yours turn out. Um, it could be the whole page, the whole album, or just a little element from it. So just type Paper Crafted with Paul into Facebook and it'll pop up. Or I'll just add a link in the description below. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.